Okay, so today I'm working on a simple, uh, or not really a simple one, but a standard type of, um, of physics problem. Okay, so we have, where we have a box on an inclined plane. Okay, and I'm just going to draw the diagram here. Okay, so we got a box on an inclined plane. Okay, and I'm going to fill in a couple of the details. So I've got a 10 kilogram box. The direction of the plane is 35 degrees. Okay, I've got a force. Now the force is not acting directly up the line of the ramp. Okay, so if this is the line of the ramp, okay, then the force is acting at 35 or 30 degrees to that line. So it's almost acting horizontal to it, but uh, in a horizontal direction, but it's not. Okay, so this is uh, given to be 106 newtons. Okay, and this angle is 30 degrees. Okay. Um, also, there's friction acting on the acting on the um, resulting uh, on the body, and the coefficient of friction is given to be 0 0.11. Okay. Now, there's a couple things that are happening here that are not really shown. Um, for one, there's a force of gravity. Okay, so a force of gravity always directs, always acts directly downwards. Okay, and the force of gravity is uh, equal to mass times acceleration, so 10 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared. So that's going to be 98.1 uh, newtons going acting downwards. Okay, there's also a reaction force from the um, from the ramp. Okay, and this comes from Newton's law, Newton's third law, where every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Okay, now it always acts uh, perpendicular to the surface of the ramp. Okay, so this is a force reaction. Okay, and this is an unknown force right now. We don't know how much that is. Okay, so what we essentially have to, what we essentially have to do is resolve the force reaction. Um, and then what we can do is figure out if this um, box is falling or or climbing, and then once it's, we determine if it's falling or climbing, um, then we can determine which direction the friction force is acting, and then what we can do is uh, figure out how fast or how slow it's moving up or down the ramp. Okay, so let's take a look. Now the first thing you're going to have to do is we are I'm going to change the direction of uh, vertical and horizontal. Okay, normally we consider a vertical to be like this yellow line going straight up and down, and horizontal would be this uh, this line going straight across. Okay, but that's really not that helpful in this case. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this line directly in the same line as the reaction force. Okay, and it hopefully will become apparent later on. Okay, and this is going to be the new vertical. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is draw another line which goes parallel to the ramp, and this is going to be another, uh, this is going to be considered to be horizontal. Okay, so this is the new horizontal. Okay, and this is vertical. Okay, really though, the, the terms vertical and horizontal are just a matter of perspective, so it doesn't really matter what you say they are, so long as they're 90 degrees uh, to each other. And the reason why it's helpful here is because um, what we can do is we can line up one of the forces with the vertical in this case, and then later on our resultant force, uh, meaning which direct, it doesn't matter if the box is sliding up or down, it's going to be lined up with the horizontal here, and so that's going to make things a lot easier for us. Okay. Let's get going then. Okay, so the first thing to consider is that the sum of the forces in the vertical direction is equal to zero. Right, and the reason why this is, okay, is because um, in light of this new direction, if the vertical forces were not summing to zero, then this box would just rise up off the ramp, which it clearly does not do. Okay, so in this direction, the forces have to be equal to zero. Okay, so what we have to do then is uh, figure out some of these angles here. Okay, so this angle here is 35 degrees. Okay, um, that's just uh, some basic angle geometry. Okay, you just pretty much have to know that. Okay, um, all right. 
So what we have is the force of gravity is acting in the negative direction. So, um, so we have force reaction acting up, which is going to be positive, minus the force of gravity, so 98.1, oops, 98.1, Okay, but the problem is not all of the gravity is acting um, along that vertical line that I drew. Only a portion of it is, so that's cosine 35 okay, is, is acting in that direction. Okay, also um, a portion of this force applied okay, is this effort, this 106 newtons is also technically pushing this thing down as well. Okay, so there's a portion of it like this going down. Okay, and that is going to be minus 106 newtons times sine 30. Oops, sorry, 30 degrees. Okay, so let's figure what these are. With this equation, what I can do is I can figure out what the reaction force is. And then from the reaction force, I can figure out um, pretty much everything else. So I might not even need the reaction force, but we'll see how that goes. Okay, uh, so sum of the forces is equal to zero, which is equal to, uh, which means that FR, let's just get rid of this here, I have zero is equal to FR minus no, 98.1 cos 35. So let's see here. 35 cos times 98.1 is 80.36 80.36 newtons minus um, 106 sine 30 should be 53 so 30 sine yeah 53 newtons okay so this means that FR is equal to the sum of these, which is um, 133.36 newtons. Okay, I might not even need this, but um, I guess it doesn't hurt to have it. Okay, uh, the second thing I need to do is resolve all the other forces. Okay, um, actually, I don't think I needed that for that. Uh, that reaction force, but nonetheless, it doesn't hurt. Okay, so now the sum of the forces in the horizontal direction, I'll just call that H, okay, is not equal to zero. Okay, instead, the sum of the horizontal forces, okay, is equal to, let's see, gravity partially pushing it down the ramp. Okay, so I've got, um, I'm going to call going down the ramp negative. Okay, so this direction is negative and going up the ramp is going to be positive. Okay, so let's see, um, gravity is going to be pushing it down the ramp and it'll be 98.1 newtons um, sine 35 degrees. Okay, that's going uh, down, so it's going to be negative. Okay, um, now the force applied is pushing it up, so it's going to be plus 106 newtons uh, cos 30. Okay, and that should really be it. Okay, I'm ignoring friction for now because I don't know which way the friction is going to be acting. Okay, so the sum of the horizontal forces Oh, crap. Okay, I can't ignore the um, the friction force just yet, all right, because it's uh, the sum of the horizontal forces. Um, oh yeah, is not yeah, that's right. Never mind, it's not zero. Uh, but I don't know which way th which way the friction force so is. I can't ignore it right now, for now. Okay, so uh, first I'm going to assume that it's frictionless, and then I'll take friction into account afterwards. Okay, so if I have sum of the forces in the horizontal direction is equal to 106 cos 30. So let's see, uh, 30 cosine is that, times 
six is ninety one point eight. Okay, so this is ninety one point eight newtons going up the ramp, and thirty five sine times ninety eight point one equals and fifty six point three going down. Okay, so negative fifty six point three newtons going down. Okay, so my sum of my forces in the horizontal direction okay, is this um, minus 98 or 91.8 okay, it's and I, ch I just flipped this uh, the direction I flipped the positive sign negative sign for the just for the calculation so it should be 35.5 going up okay so it's 35.5 newtons traveling up Okay, so now that I know that the, the force is traveling up, I know that the friction is resisting it. Okay, so the force of friction is going to be resist resisting this, F mu. Okay, so the sum of my forces in the horizontal direction, okay, is going to be my force horizontal, which I'll just call FT for total force. Okay, so FT um, minus the force of friction. F mu. Okay, so which is what this means is that the sum of the forces in the horizontal direction is equal to uh, FT, which is 35.5. Okay, and the, now I got to subtract the friction from it which is um, force normal times the coefficient. Ah, uh, yeah, there we go. Force normal times the coefficient of friction. Okay. Okay. Okay, so let's see here. What I have is force horizontal is equal to uh, 35.5. See, this is why I also rotated the axis, because now the resulting force is acting right along this new horizontal that I designated. Okay, and the new force normal is acting along there too. Okay, now the force normal is basically um, the reaction force that's, um, that is, well, it has reaction force that's uh, acting on there. So I have, let's see, uh, 133.36, so I guess I did need that, 133.36 newtons times the coefficient of friction, 0 0.110. Okay, so then what I have is sum of the forces is FH is equal to 35.5 newtons minus, um, let's see, so 133.36, 133.36 times 0.11 is 14.67 14.67 okay yeah. newtons okay and so the sum of the forces in the horizontal direction is equal to 35.5 35.5 minus 14.67 okay is 20.83 Okay, now what this means is I have uh, 20.83 resultant force acting in the upward direction. Okay, now the question is asking me how far, or how f what's the acceleration up the ramp? Okay, I'm just going to make a little bit of room there. Okay, and so the force is equal to mass times acceleration. Okay, now the force is equal to 20.83 newtons. Okay, the mass is 10 kilograms, and then the acceleration is what we're looking for. Okay, so acceleration is equal to 20.83 divided by 10 kilograms. Newtons. Okay, and so that's equal to 2. Point Point zero eight three meters per 
second squared. Okay. Let's see. And just to be, oh well, yeah, it is 2.083 meters per second squared, um, accelerating up the ramp. Okay, and that's the solution to the problem. Okay, so if you have any questions, uh, give me a shout or drop me a line, and hopefully this helps.